Revenge Films. My name is Sarah, and I'm a newlywed. My husband and I both work full time, and we wanted to save up before having any children together. One day when I was at work, I felt a sudden chill and my joints began to ache, and I had no choice but to wrap up work for the day. It was before noon, but I called a taxi and went home. When I checked my temperature, I had a high fever and I still felt terrible, so I decided to go straight to bed after taking some cold medicine that I had at home. My body was shaking and my entire body was in pain. The next time I awoke, it was 4 p.m., I'm usually in charge of preparing dinner, but I was still feeling horrible. And it seemed that my body temperature was higher than before. I messaged my husband and told him that I wasn't feeling well enough to cook tonight. He replied right away and said he was okay with that. After that, I went back to sleep. When I woke up again, I saw that my husband was home, so I made my way to the living room to greet him. You're home. I have a fever and I had to leave work early. I spent most of the afternoon in bed. I hope that you feel better soon. He barely looked up from the game that he was playing on his smartphone. I had hoped that he had bought some fruit or something on his way back from work to make me feel better, but apparently not. I didn't blame him for not being able to read my mind. The following day, I was still sick and my body temperature hadn't gone down, so I decided to go to the hospital. After receiving a drip infusion at the hospital, I felt much better, but that evening, my temperature went up again and I didn't feel well. I now had a bad cough too and I messaged my husband about it. He then replied and told me that he would stay with a friend for a couple nights because he didn't want to catch what I had. Again, I had hoped that he would think about me and come straight home to look after me. I can't be sick and take time off of work. You need to get well on your own. I was disheartened by the way he was acting, but I didn't have the energy to talk back to him. I spent another two days in bed fighting off my cold. I didn't have an appetite and it was hard for me to even drink water. I couldn't stop coughing either and was unable to sleep well. I knew that I should eat, but I couldn't get up and make my way to the kitchen to cook. It didn't seem like my husband would be coming home anytime soon and my condition wasn't getting any better. I had no one to turn to, so I called my husband. I'm sorry, but I need you to come home. I'm not feeling any better. I think my cold is getting worse, and it's difficult for me to get out of bed. Will you drive me to the hospital after work? Sorry, no can do. What do you mean? I'm going out for drinks with my colleagues tonight. I can't be the only one that doesn't go. I just need you to take me to the hospital. Then you can go see your colleagues, so please. I feel like what I have is not just a common cold. It may be something more serious, and I'm starting to get really worried. You'll be fine if you sleep well and stay in bed. I'll call you later. Wait, please don't hang up. But my husband hung up the phone on me. I called him several times after that, but he never picked up. The last time that I called him, it went straight to voicemail. I felt helpless. When I woke up, I was lying on a hospital bed and connected to a drip infusion. Sarah, are you alright? How did I get myself to the hospital? You passed out. You had pneumonia and dehydration. We were worried that you weren't going to make it. My colleague was at my bedside at the hospital. She told me that she'd become concerned when I had missed several days of work and when she couldn't get in touch with me. She had visited my house to check up on me after work. She rang my doorbell several times, but no one answered and saw that my front door was unlocked, so she let herself in. I wasn't in the living room, so she figured that I was in my bedroom, and when she came in to check, I was lying on the floor unconscious next to my bed. I remembered that I'd gotten out of bed and walked to the kitchen to pour myself a glass of water. I couldn't remember anything after that. My colleague called an ambulance and accompanied me to the hospital. She tried to get in touch with my husband, but he was unreachable. My parents also came to the hospital to check up on me. Where is Harry? What could he be doing that is more important than his wife is in the hospital? When my parents found out that Harry had left me at home alone to go drinking with his colleagues, they were furious. They tried to get in touch with him, but they couldn't get through. After that, my cousin, who happened to work at the same company as my husband, revealed the truth about Harry. My cousin happened to be out for drinks too on the same night as Harry. They didn't know each other well, but my cousin went over to speak to Harry that night. He was shocked to hear the things that Harry was telling him. They barely knew each other. 
It's such a coincidence that we work at the same company and that you married my cousin. How is married life with Sarah? Eh, we're doing all right. Sarah's in charge of making dinner for the two of us, but she has a fever now, so I've had to eat out the past few days, which is kind of bothersome. Harry was talking about me being sick as if it were a funny story. His colleagues were concerned for my health when they heard that I was sick. Is your wife okay? Shouldn't you get back home to her to see if she's doing better? I have no idea, but it's just a cold. She'll get over it. I've had to go without a home-cooked dinner for days now. I have been able to go home because I can't get sick, being busy with work and all. I've had to ask friends to let me stay at their places. It's been a nuisance for me, really. You're being really selfish, you know that? As her partner, you should stop worrying about yourself so much and take care of her. She probably can't get out of bed. I bet she's barely eaten. You should cook for her. That's the least you can do. She probably doesn't have an appetite and won't be able to eat, so there's no point in me cooking for her. She can probably grab something from the pantry. She only has to think about herself right now, so it's not so much an issue for her. Everyone that heard what Harry was saying was alarmed by his behavior. Do you hear yourself? You need to go home right away and check to see if your wife has it passed out or something. Harry's colleagues tried to persuade him to go home, but he resisted the idea. She'll be fine. And Harry remained at the bar and continued to drink. The previous month, when Harry was the one with the cold, I asked my boss if I could work from home so that I could take care of him. And I actually took good care of him. My colleagues remembered that and reminded him of it. When you were sick last month, your wife stayed home with you the entire time. You should be more grateful. Harry's colleagues were not only appalled, but also irritated by his attitude towards me. I never get sick, so when I have a fever, it means my body's in a really bad state. To that, one of his colleagues said, It's not a matter of whether someone has a fever or not. It's the fact that your wife is so sick that she can't get out of bed for three days. Doesn't that concern you? My wife will be fine. Besides, she tends to exaggerate her situation, so I'm sure it's not as bad as it seems. If we have a child together, she would have to look after our baby even on days that she feels sick. She needs to prepare herself for when she becomes a mother. Everyone tried to persuade Harry to do the right thing, but after some time, they realized that he wasn't going to listen. My cousin left the bar early and got in a taxi to come check up on me. But at that time, I'd already been taken to the hospital by ambulance. My parents were horrified when they heard the full story. You shouldn't stay married to Harry. He's a terrible husband to you. I understood why everyone was upset with Harry, and I also came to the realization that I couldn't stay married to him any longer. When I handed the signed divorce papers to Harry, he was taken by surprise. Why are you leaving me? My parents felt it was meaningless to explain the situation to Harry, so they decided to speak to his parents instead. When Harry's parents found out that Harry almost left me to die at home by myself, they were livid. We apologize for our son's outrageous behavior. They felt really bad about how their son had treated me. Meanwhile, Harry had no idea why I was divorcing him and wouldn't give in. But his parents forced him to sign the divorce papers because they felt that it was the right thing to do. They also made him promise to pay me alimony for the way he had treated me. After our divorce was finalized, I saw my cousin again and he told me that Harry still had no idea why I had left him. He felt that he hadn't done anything wrong. Harry would say mean things about me to his colleagues, but his colleagues defended me because they knew what a terrible husband he had been to me. Do you really think you had no fault in the events leading up to your divorce? You took your wife for granted. You expect her to be there when you need her help. But if it's the other way around, you can't seem to do anything nice for her. That's why she left you. That's right. I feel sorry for your ex-wife. I'd say good riddance for her. She's going to be so much better off without you. You seem to have no understanding of human emotions or pain. You're crazy for not taking good care of a nice person like your wife. To be honest, now that I know what kind of person you really are, I don't want anything to do with you. People at work were hostile to Harry now that they knew his true personality, and after a while, things became awkward for Harry and he quit his job. Harry learned the hard way that he shouldn't take people's kindness for granted, and that he should show his appreciation towards others by helping them when they needed his help. If he hadn't been so selfish, we may not have gotten divorced. Now that I'm divorced from Harry, I often wondered why I married him in the first place. I was ashamed to have been married to someone like him. The one good thing was that we didn't share any children, and I was still relatively young, so I had time still to find my new partner and start a family with that person. How was today's video? 
If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.